Okay, in section 60, we're going to talk about something called statistical inference. And to do this, we're going to talk about three main ideas uh, in the section. We're going to define what it means to be statistically significant. Uh, we're going to talk about how to calculate margin of error with confidence intervals. And then lastly, we're going to address something called hypothesis testing. Okay, so our first topic of interest is uh, this phrase, statistically significant. And so I, I want to kind of paint a picture for you real quick, um, just kind of set the stage on this. Uh, let's pretend um, you and your spouse are going to take your uh, pet. I have cats, so let's say I'm going to go take my cat to the vet. And my wife and I, have, we've sort of agreed that we expect the, the vet bill to be about $100. Um, we know it's just time for shots and that sort of thing. So $100 seems about right for us. Um, now, if I come home and I say, hey, hon, uh, it costs 150 bucks, is my wife going to be concerned? She want to get some more details on that? Probably not. Um, she'll just assume that something minor happened that we didn't just know about. But $100 to 150 is pretty close. Uh, but if I came home and I said, uh, hey, hon, uh, with, with some surprises, and I spent $1,000, okay. Now, if your spouse came home and said, I spent a thousand when you expected a hundred, you're going to want to see some receipts. You're going to want to look at something uh, just to kind of understand where the money went. So somewhere between a thousand and 150, there's like this magic number where one dollar less, you don't care. One dollar less, you're like, oh, okay, that's fine. But one dollar more, all of a sudden it's interesting and you really want some more details. Okay, so in a very general sense, that feeling, that desire to get more evidence is what we define as statistically significant. So in a textbook definition, it says a set of measurements or observations and a statistical study is said to be statistically significant if it is unlikely to have occurred by chance. So in other words, um, if it's not random, uh, what we define as sort of one out of so many events, then we're going to think that it, there's some importance to it. So we kind of define significance um, at a couple of levels. We either have what's called the 0.05 level or the 0.01 level. Uh, and this 0.05 means if my sample would show up 5% of the time or less, that 5% is evidence that it's significant. The 1% level is sort of the same idea, but this is something where we say it's like 1% of the time. So at a 5% level, uh, that would mean the likelihood of this event occurring would only show up 1 out of 20 times, or 5 out of 100, which is kind of where we get the 5%. And the 1% level would make it even rarer where we get excited if it's 1 out of 100. Okay, so let's go through a couple scenarios and just ask ourselves, would we consider this event or this what's what's going on to be something we say is uh, statistically statistically significant? Uh, and so, for lack of a better argument, we're just going to look at the 0.05 level. So let's say I take a dice. Uh, it's got six sides: one, one, two, three, four, five, and six. And I roll it 60 times in a row, and I only get six twice. Is that something that I think is weird? Am I going to get interested in that. Okay, well, how often would I expect six to show up uh, naturally? Uh, well, I would expect one out of six times. So I roll the dice, um, and I would expect one-sixth of the time, or, I'm going to type that in a calculator real quick here, uh, about 16%, about 16.7%. Sorry, I just realized I was off screen there. Um, okay, so the likelihood of a six showing up is about one out of six or uh, 0.167, uh, or that translates to about 16, 17%. Okay, so let's change the, the statement then. So if a 6 only shows up 1 out of 6 times, then not having a 6, that's going to show up 5 out of 6 times. Uh, or, in decimal form, about 83%. Okay, so let's kind of run this thought experiment then. Let's say I roll a dice twice. 
because once I would expect a, anything else but a six to show up five out of six times or 83% of the time. I'm not getting too excited about that. That's uh, nowhere near our level of significance is at the 5% mark. So let's say I do this twice though. Let's say I roll a dice and a six doesn't show up. So that means five out of six times five out of six because other numbers must have showed up. And so if I type that in a calculator, uh, I get uh, 0.69 or 69.4%. Okay, well, that's not shocking, right? That's, that's going to happen most of the time. I, I could see something like that. So let's take this out where I'm rolling a dice, um, but a six doesn't show up. Uh, let's go five times in a row. And let's see what happens. And we get 40%. So 40.1% of the time that would happen. So in other words, I'm, I roll the dice five times and a stick still hasn't shown up yet. I'm not worried, right? Because I would see something like that 40% of the time. But let's double that. Let's look at that uh, 10 times. So I roll the dice 10 times in a row. And I get that that would happen about 16.1% of the time. Okay, so notice the percent's getting smaller and smaller and smaller. So the likelihood that I'm going to avoid 6 uh, decreases the more times I toss it. Now, at 10 times in a row, am I going to call everyone to come look and see at my strange die because, it, you know, a 6 hasn't shown up yet? Not really. That's only 16% of the time. But let's double it again. Let's say uh, 20 times in a row. Let me fix what I did, what's typed here. Okay, so now I'm rolling the dice and I do it 20 times in a row. Now I start to see a problem. Okay, so at this point, I only get that um, about 2.026 or 2.6% 2 of the time. So now am I worried, right? Now I'm a little concerned because I've tossed this die out 20 times in a row and a six still hasn't shown up. Randomly, just due to luck, I would see a scenario like that 2.6% of the time. Well, remember, right back here, we said at the 5% level, that's when we start to say statistically significant, okay? So doing 20 die tosses in a row, I still haven't seen a six. I'm now worried that there's something weird going on. I want to get this die checked out, right? But our question says 60 times in a row, in a, 60 rolls of a dice, and we only got a six twice. So let's actually look at that math. So let's say we take our five six. Now in that 60 times, the six only showed up twice, right? So it's not that we rolled it 60 times, it's that we actually had 58 rolls where six didn't show up because it showed up the other times and so if i type that in i get uh if your calculator is like mine uh, it's, it says 2.55 e sorry big old e to the negative five is what my calculator says now what that translates to is point zero 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 two five five right uh, that's less than one, not even one, less than 1%. Um, we're looking at one out of 10,000 times we would see something like this. So, I, I yeah, th th this definitely is what we would consider to be st statistically significant um, just based on the small percentages that we see. All right, let's go to the second scenario. A uh, basketball player with a 92% free throw percentage misses 18 free throws in a row. Okay, so kind of the same logic. Uh, let's start off with what we expect to see. So if he makes it 92% of the time, that means he, mi he misses it 8%. So the likelihood of him missing once 8% of the time, I'm not too thrilled. I mean, that, that's, that's bigger than our 5%. So that I wouldn't say is significant, but uh, let's say twice. Right? He's a pretty good shot, 
And so if I just multiply that out together, I get 0 0.0064, uh, which translates to uh, 0.6%, 0 0.64%. 0 so it's less than 1% of the time. So I'm already thinking, th this is weird. I mean, th this guy's on fire. He normally hits everything he shoots. So the likelihood of, of him missing twice in a row is less than 1%, and that's already beyond our threshold for um, 5% of the time. So if it's you know 5% or less, then we get to say statistically significant. So in this case, this one is also statistically significant, um, even just doing it twice. So let's say I take it out to the... Uh, where he does it 18 times in a row, uh, that's going to be a really tiny number. Uh, yep, I get, my calculator says 1.8e to the negative 20. And that translates to point zero 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 zero. There's 19 zeros, right? Eventually a 1 shows up somewhere down the road. So if this guy has consistently shot 92% of the time, the likelihood he misses 18 in a row, he's sick, he's ill, he's broken his arm, there's some other explanation out there that would, that would justify what's going on with that. Okay, uh, just one more scenario I want to talk about, and then we'll move on to a different topic. Um, in a study of children injured in automobile crashes, those wearing seatbelts had a mean stay of 0.83 days in an intensive care unit. Those not wearing seatbelts had a mean stay of 1.39 days. In other words, when people got in car accidents, um, when they wore a seatbelt, they stayed in the hospital less than a day. And when they didn't wear a seatbelt, they stayed in the hospital more than a day. Okay. Uh, they've gone ahead and figured out the probability. So the probability of this difference in means occurring by chance turns out to be less than 1 in 10,000. Is this result significant at the 5% level? Okay, so let's translate this into some just decimal real quick. Uh, 1 in 10,000. So if I take 1 divided by 10,000, I get uh, 0.0004. Okay. Now, at the 5% level, uh, now this is less than 0 0.05. So is it significant at the 5% level? Yep. So we definitely would make a statement that that would be um, significant at 5% of the time. And at the 1% level, well, 0 0.0004 is also less than 0 0.01, so it's even significant at the 1% of the level. So the conclusion being, wear your seatbelt, um, the likelihood of you getting hurt is stronger if you don't wear it, so you actually will save yourself some some stay in the hospital by having your seatbelt on.